Hi guys, welcome back to the Life of P. Today, we're actually gonna be doing some automotive content. Uh, so behind us, we have a, uh, what year is it? 95 uh, GMC, I don't know, Yukon. Yeah, 95 GMC Yukon, I'm bad at this stuff. Anyways, what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be replacing the radiator and the thermostat. And then actually, we are just found out that they have a problem with the parking brake cable, so we're gonna take a look at that too, see if we can't diagnose it and get it fixed. Um, so we're actually out here at my church. This is my pastor, Mr. Joe. Hey and uh, he is going to be assisting us for the disassembly and then, uh, then we're gonna get it taken care of. So let's do it. All right, so first things first, what we're gonna do is we gotta start removing the shroud. So we got some, looks like 10, millib 10 millimeter bolts right here. We're gonna disconnect this wiring loom that's running across the top of it. We're gonna pull that out. And I'm not sure if there are, yeah, so there's a couple more. One like right here. That one's missing and there's probably two more on this side. One, just one, okay. So we got those bolts we gotta take out. This fan shroud should just pop up and then uh, we will start taking apart the hoses, draining the radiator, all the fun stuff. All right, so once you get the top shroud off, you can see we got it off here. This is the top of the radiator. Uh, just those bolts, like I said, move the loom out of the way. It's just got this little, top shroud just had this little clip on it right here. Once it's clipped in, just slide a, the flat head in here, pop it up, loom comes out, push it over. I always try to keep my bolts and stuff same place because I am forgetful and we'll lose it anyways so hard to show you but I'll show you in a second there are a bolt here and one on the opposite side of the lower shroud that we're gonna have to take out to get to it actually I was hutched up in the engine bay but it's taking forever so what I'm gonna do is we have this shroud right here as you can see I've already taken this bolt out all right there we got that bolt right there. This one is tucked up in the corner. Same thing for that one. And these are size 15 millimeter. So let's go ahead and take that out. All right, so now you can see we got the lower radiator shroud pulled out. Uh, we're just gonna prop it up here because I don't really think we need to pull it out all the way. Um, something I just found out is this thing is actually, let's go around here. Trans cooler lines coming in right here. You can see how they come in right there and down here. So, um, yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go underneath. We have this clever little drain pan right here because we don't want coolant getting all over the ground. It's very bad for the environment, very bad for animals. You know me, Mr. Green. So we're going to put that underneath, try to catch as much of it as we can. Probably not going to get 100% of it, but we're going to do the best we can. Um, 16 quart, I think it'll be enough to get what we got to get because it's not going to drain the entire cooling system. But once we get that... Um, gonna let it drain lower radiator hose is right here anyways gonna loosen this hose clamp right here uh, do our best to get uh, the drain pan position under here and just work this off little by little you have to do a bunch of twisting to break the seal and just shaking it back and forth until it comes off and then it's gonna be a mess so got the lower radiator hose clamp loosened so now what we gotta do is we're gonna come into the top here uh, you're gonna see an angle of me you wish you never saw I'm really sorry please don't have nightmares go in there we will loose Try not to cut myself on the radiator. Um, also, very sincere moment. Uh, this very well may be my last video. Not because I'm gonna stop, but because my mother may kill me. See, I forgot to change. And this is a really nice shirt she got me. And it's more than likely gonna get dirty. Slash greasy, slash probably not gonna be able to wear it in public again. So, sorry mom. Here we go. Got a drain pan down here, bottom frame. Try to line it up. Cross our fingers. Okay, so still draining. Didn't get every bit of it. As you can see, there is still a little on the ground, and it's kind of splashing out. What did we learn? Well, uh, my aim is actually pretty good, go figure. But secondly, uh, next time I would probably take a shop towel or something and put it where it's gonna be impacting. So there's not as much splash, uh, especially if you're working outdoors like this, working in your shop. I mean, you still don't want your cooling everywhere, but you can clean it up and it's not that bad, so. Success, let's take the upper off. So, since I wasn't able to show you guys what the hose clamp looked like and how we took it off, right? Here's our hose clamp. 
It's an eight millimeter or a flathead. Uh, we're just gonna use the eight millimeter. And all you're gonna do is you're just gonna unscrew it till you can wiggle the clamp. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And then you just kind of twist, pry, and pull until you get that, hand, that hose off. That's it. Let's go. Upper radiator hose right here. Twist it. See how it's unthreading right here? Now I can just take that off. There's a little nipple that it goes on. You'll see in a second. This one's gonna come off very easily. Sometimes they don't do that. This is just lucky. Just pull. There's actually some coolant in here still, so we don't want that to dump. So what we're gonna do, take it and run it back a little bit because we gotta pull the radiator out. All right, next step. So got these bolts here, right? 10 millimeter, we got one here on the opposing side, right by the fill cup. 10 millimeter, take those out. Those are secure in the top of the radiator down. Well, that's unfortunate. The audio quality on some of these previous clips uh, in between me talking about pulling the radiator, lower radiator hose, and then uh, to now, didn't have the mic plugged in. So sorry, top tier productions here at uh, The Life of P. Anywho, so once you get those bolts taken out, this piece just comes off. That's all it is. So now your radiator can come out, but we still had the overflow hose that we had to take out, which is right here. Um, I just had to use a flathead screwdriver, or a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, just had a Phillips head on top of it. Sometimes, you, I mean, use a flathead for pretty much everything. So take that off, it slides off nice and easy. Uh, now what we gotta do now is these trans cooler lines. All right, chill. Take that one, there's a lower one I showed you earlier. And then whenever we get the radiator out, before we put it back together, we're gonna go ahead and replace the thermostat. Uh, just because it's good practice. And the thermostat is actually right here. Hopefully I can zoom in on it. That little, see where the upper radiator hose comes down into that neck? Well, that neck is gonna be our uh, thermostat housing. What we're gonna do is we're actually going to coat it down with WD-40 now, just because those studs look a little rusty. And I don't want to break one. I hope that doesn't jinx myself. All right, this next one's gonna be kind of hard to show you. Uh, I mean, it'd be easier if I'd have done it right the first time, but I've already taken one of the uh, trans cooler lines out, but they're super simple. 13 millimeter wrench. I don't know if that's universal. I highly doubt it, but that is for the situation that we're working with, the 5.7 out of the 93 Yukon, 95 Yukon. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing, and I'm just gonna show you where you're looking at, right? So, passenger side of the vehicle, radiator. You see this is the top one right here. This nut, you just get on it, and it should come out pretty good. They can be rusty, as everything can be. This one was actually pretty good. I'm hoping the bottom one is too. But the bottom one is right. Mm, yeah, right there. So we're gonna pop that out, and then we should be able to pull the radiator up. Quick side note, uh, owner of the vehicle was also talking about a judder, like it wasn't running good at all. Uh, and I was kind of baffled when I took the upper trans cooler line off and there was no fluid in it. And now that I'm taking the lower trans cooler line, there is some fluid coming out of there uh, and it's pretty dark. So we're gonna go also check the trans fluid because it probably is pretty low, so we're probably just gonna top it off. Hope there's not a really bad leak somewhere. Boom, we're leaking, but boom. Let's take a field trip. All right, this is your radiator. So, long story short, water slash coolant comes in down here, right? Well, now I look like an idiot. I actually don't know if it goes in the, I'm pretty sure it goes in the top. It could go in the bottom. One's an entrance, one's an exit, right? It's gonna come in one and go grab the other. It's gonna come through and it's got these tubes run through here. Now the reason why you see these have these waves in them is because it's for the air to pass over and it's basically, I'm just gonna call it cools the water by pulling heat out of it. Uh, that's why your engine gets up to 200 something degrees, 190, whatever, and it stops getting hotter, theoretically. So anyways, comes in here, comes out here. These are trans cooler lines, so that means the transmission fluid is going to be pumped out of the transmission sump into these lines, which you're gonna cool down. Where for an off-road vehicle like this, Something heavy duty, it keeps the trans from overheating and the oil from burning. This is your fill point. 
and this is the stopcock that I was talking about. So you can actually take this out, oh, unless you have baby fingers. There we go. You twist this number. This is how you're actually supposed to drain it. So. Boom. That comes out. You drain out of there. Open your cap. All's well and good. Anywho. Now it's time for the new one. Two years old and getting beat up by a box. But basically, check orientation on all of these items. So make sure that your two fill and exit points are in the right. You can see that. They're in the same spot. Uh, some vehicles, because of space limitations, they can have them on both sides. This one can be on the bottom, that can be on top. It's a whole thing. This could be not even on the radiator, it could be in a different point of the cooling system. So just make sure everything fits. These actually have plugs in them. Um, I'll show you when we go to take them out. So we'll just take those out, call it a day. And then this is where our trans cooler lines are gonna go. This is our stop cock that I was talking about. So next time we need to drain it, we can actually just come out of here if we can get to it easily. Um, so yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this back in exactly how it came out. And then once we get the line hooked back up, so it stops dripping the transmission fluid, because that's that's all I'm gonna do right now, is transmission fluid lines. We're gonna start working on that uh, thermostat. Here we go. All right. This is that lower radiator mount I was trying to show you. Uh, this one came out. That's not a big deal because it's got a dimple on the bottom or a nipple, whatever. It's got this pointy bit. This is going to go in a hole in the lower radiator mount that's on the bottom. So all you got to do is check your orientation on the other side. This one goes... See how it's got a fat bit, a smaller bit? The fat bit toward the back, but this bit toward the front. Pop it in there, radiator sits in there. Nice, nice, good, good. Here we go. These bits right here are what's gonna sit inside those things we just showed you. I'm all over the place, I'm very sorry. All right guys, we are rejoined by Pastor Joe out here. He's giving me the expert advice I need to finish this job. So, <clears throat> When we had the new radiator out, uh, or we had the old radi out, radiator out, coming out of this side right here with the uh, top fill port, there were two crimped off hoses. Now, I meant to put them in before I stuck the radiator into the engine just to make it easier on myself, but I didn't do that because I didn't think about it. So, tried to screw the, uh, like the, uh, what do you call them? You can call them the nuts, like the hose nuts, whatever. Tried to get them into here, but they wouldn't fit. Turns out you actually just have to take this out, throw the other ones into where this came from, yada yada, call it a day, bing, bang, boom. So you don't need these. Uh, went ahead and reconnected our radiator mounts right here, top one, top one. Uh, made sure that these rubber cushions, I don't know if you can see it that well, that these rubber cushions are aligned properly, same with this side. Bam, bam, all is good. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to take the rest of the upper radiator hose off, which is one hose clamp right there on top of the thermostat, if we can reach it. Yeah, I think we can. And then we'll take that off. Uh, I had some WD-40 sitting on these uh, the stud and bolt that's holding the thermostat housing on. Take it off. Old thermostat out, new thermostat in, gasket, bing, bang, boom. Let's do it. I appreciate the information. So, talking to y'all and Mr. Joe here. So we got the thermostats out. I uh, showed you on the bottom how this one says 195F, 91C, means 195 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the old one. It says 195 right there. So, a way you can check your thermostat. If you think the thermostat's not working, your car's overheating, whatever, you take it, boil water on the stove. You get it up to whatever temperature it says, and this diaphragm here, the spring, should collapse. When that collapses is when it allows the coolant to go from the engine block into the upper radiator hose into your radiator circuit, doing its thing. So, usually when your car gets up to temp, this opens and it maintains it. See the master in action. Oh yeah. So, you're not really supposed to do this with dirty hands. Uh, I don't have my stuff, so I'm just going to be as careful as I can. Take the thermostat, pop it back in the hole, make sure she sits good and down in there. Take your gasket, 
there's a little flap right here that you got to pick up, a little bracket that mounts that sensor there. I don't know what that sensor is, so we're not going to worry about it. You take this, take it back right there, make sure that's nice and good. Then you're going to take your housing and your stud that you pulled out earlier. You're going to have to line everything up and run the stud through it. So I like to drop it into the top housing. Drop it into the housing like this, then you're going to slide that bracket, then you're going to slide the uh, gasket on there, and then you're going to thread it into the hole. It makes the other side much easier to line up. I got some steaks. Oh. I'm going to do a little sous vide action. Yeah. She won't eat them any other way now. I'm going to spoil her. Do a what? Sous vide. Sous vide. All right, so I got the thermostat on. Uh, thermostat gasket, new gasket on there. Everything should be good. This is the upper radiator hose we're reconnecting. This uh, particular hose clamp is a 5 sixteenths, so it could also be a Phillips head if you want it to be, or it could be a flat head, it could be whatever you want it to be. So, as long as you get that tightened down, you're good. We're going to tighten down the lower radiator hose in the exact same fashion. Uh, we've already tightened down the trans cooler lines that uh, run to the top and bottom on the passenger side of this radiator. We're going to reconnect the two bolts on the bottom shroud of the fan, then we're going to uh, Slip the top shroud of the fan back on, fill her up with coolant, let her run, let her idle, circulate through, make sure she's topped off, radiator's changed. All right, so because there's coolant on the ground, and uh, even though I made the joke of, oh, I don't want to mess the shirt up, I don't want to mess it up that bad, so I think I can still salvage it. I got the cardboard down. We're going to take these two 10 millimeter bolts, millimeter bolts, line up the bottom fan shroud, uh, finger start them, always finger start, that way you don't cross thread, get those tightened up. Come back up top, top fan shroud, top her off, let her rip. All right, last thing we gotta put on the radiator shroud. You remember, you go like this one, two, three, right here. See that? And you got one that goes here, one that goes here, and your wiring loom runs this little channel here under that clip. Put some regular antifreeze coolant in there because Alabama, you need both. Uh, this is the concentrated version. I don't buy the 50-50 because you're paying a lot of money for half water. Just do it yourself. So we're gonna put this, pretty much a full thing of this into uh, the radiator. Just gotta fill it all the way up. And then we're just gonna add water as we need it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna fill it all the way up and you're gonna start it. You're gonna run it because it's gonna circulate all that air and pump all that air out of the cooling system. Because once you have air in there, you can air lock it, your engine overheats. You did all this for nothing. As expected, the thermostat gasket is not on properly. Remember how I was getting really cocky and sure of myself talking about, oh, you put the gasket, then the bracket, then you put the thermostat. No, you don't do that. You put the bracket on top of the thermostat housing. <laughs> because if you don't, the gasket isn't even doing anything because there's metal in the way and it's creating a giant air hole. So we're going to fix that. So long story short, this bracket right here gets hooked to this number that's supposed to go over all this stuff let's go over this not under it uh, because I put it under it it was uh, deforming the gasket and it was not sealing properly so now put the stud out take this get over the top I hate brackets line her up put that in there Boom, bamo. You got your radiator filled up, it's pumped out all the water, or all the air, you put the cap back on, and now that it's running, we're gonna let it warm up a little bit, make sure it don't overheat, and we're gonna check the trans temp, trans fluid level. Hey guys, Preston from the future, from the editing booth. Uh, so my last video got corrupted, like the end of the video to where I was going to do the outro and everything, got corrupted. Uh, if you notice for the last, 
six-ish minutes of the video, there's only audio coming out of the left side, and that's because my adapter for my phone, because I have an iPhone, you gotta have the dongle adapter. Something went wrong, and all of a sudden it was only recording for the left side, so that's unfortunate. Uh, very sorry for all the clicks and pops that were coming through it. I'm gonna have to just figure out. I may just have to get a new microphone. Um, I've already recorded my next video, uh, so I hope that that is not all through it, but I have yet to listen to it. So we will just see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. The Yukon was fine. Uh, we checked the trans fluid. It was actually full, of, had full fluid. Probably could be changed, but it was fine. So that's weird. Uh, but it runs, stays cool. We got it at the temp and it didn't get above 210. Can't complain about that. So yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you wanna see. If there's anything you wanna see, whether it be cooking, household, or automotive, you let me know. I'll do my best. Take care.